I'm Michael Daly, and I'm here to tell you about the outcome of Kamaru Usman versus Jorge Masvidal 2 if that rematch takes place this year. These two first fought at UFC 251 in July of 2020, and Kamaru Usman, the welterweight champion, reigned victorious on that night at Yaz Island in Abu Dhabi, UAE. For me, whether these two fight again in 2021 or 2022, even further than that, I still see the fight going down similar to how it went down during the first time. Let me start off by talking about wrestling. That won the fight for Kamaru Usman, and I do not see it changing whatsoever. Kamaru Usman, he's a pressure wrestler. He knows how to take you down, whether it's a single leg, a double leg, and most importantly, whether you try to scramble out, whether you try to circle out and get away from him, especially in a smaller octagon, which is what the UFC has fought in when fans have been absent and out of the arena, it will be much harder to get away from him. Yes, Jorge Masvidal is very fast, but in the first fight, he had an issue getting pressed up against the cage. I do not see that changing. Kamaru Usman is notorious for getting his opponents up against the cage and just wearing on them. Kamaru Usman is a big 170-pound welterweight. Let's remember that, guys. At one point in time, Jorge Masvidal was a lightweight. He was too big for lightweight. He jumped up to welterweight. Now, I think Jorge Masvidal is a great welterweight size. I'm not saying he's small at all. But Kamaru Usman is made of muscle. He is all muscle. So imagine that, being pressed up against the cage. You have nowhere to go. He's breathing on you. And all of the energy, all of your muscles are just being carried by him. You're trying to not only hold your own body weight up, but hold Kamaru Usman's body weight up. After he already made weight, put liquids in his system, and now he ballooned up. Good luck. Now, I heard something that a lot of people have been talking about lately. And it's the fact that Jorge Masvidal only had six days to prepare. Yes, he did. And kudos to him for taking that fight on six days notice, passing about three COVID tests before he was cleared to go. But you know who also had to take that fight on six days notice? Kamara Usman. Let's give some credit to this guy, okay? Because Jorge Masvidal obviously was not his original opponent for that fight. Kamar Usman was supposed to fight Gilbert Burns, but unfortunately, Burns was sidelined due to a positive COVID case. Those two last, last fought last weekend. But Kamar Usman took the fight on six days' notice against a completely different fighter. The game plan against Burns is much different than the game plan against Masvidal. Masvidal's a striker, solely a striker. Yes, he's competent on the ground. That's only if you take him there. He's not necessarily looking for takedowns. Gilbert Burns is a black belt jujitsu player who, oh, by the way, happens to have excelled over the years with his striking, whether it was with the Black Zillions or Sanford MMA and Henry Hooft. But Kamaru Usman stepped to the plate as well. Let's give him his due as well. And a lot of times, Kamaru Usman gets a bad rap for being a boring fighter for not being entertaining, for just being a wrestler. I'm here to tell you, those are all lies. Kamaru Snoozman? No, 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 no. You've been watching the Nigerian nightmare. Not only is he a world-class wrestler, but he is a dominant and heavy-handed striker. And he's only getting better under the tutelage of Trevor Whitman. No disrespect to Henry Hooft. But Trevor Whitman is designed for boxers. What better match for Kamaru Usman? A change of scenery up in the altitude in Colorado to start his training. His jab against Gilbert Burns looked great. And oh, by the way, his jab against Jorge Masvidal in the fight before that, which is the fight I'm talking about, was stupendous. Kamaru Usman proved that he is the total package. And he became a meme after his foot stomps. But you know what? He's a trendsetter. Because after that fight, guess what? Other fighters started using the foot stomps. 
And I'm not here to say that Kamaru Usman invented the foot stomp because he didn't. It's been around for a long time, but it's not a utilized move. So people were calling him boring. He's not boring. He's dominant. He's tactical. He's brilliant. If these two were to rematch with one another, it would be the same story. Masvidal would get taken down. Usman would drag him into deep waters and test his gas tank. Kamaru Usman does not get enough credit for his cardio. When he fought Colby Covington back in December 2019, everyone was raving about Covington's gas tank. Oh, this guy, he can go. Look at the pace he put on Robbie Lawler. Did you see what Kamar Usman did to him? Kamar Usman has just as good of a gas tank, if not better. So for me, the reason why I bring that up is because in the first fight, Kamar Usman put it on him. He was barely tired at the end. And again, the excuse is, oh, well, Masvidal only had six days to prepare. Again, let's not forget, Kamaru Usman was on a flight back to Dallas, Texas to visit his family when he got the call that he had to go back to Las Vegas, then to Abu Dhabi to fight because he had an opponent. At that time, he didn't know who it was, but he knew he had an opponent. So let's not act like he didn't have time off. And like, like he had it easy because he didn't. Kamar Usman had just as much of a, ta- a challenge as Jorge Masvidal in that fight. But ultimately, in that first matchup, Kamar Usman dominated him on the ground. He also struck with him as well. Let's not forget that either. On the other end, right, if I'm going to say one way Jorge Masvidal can get it done in a rematch, and to me, it's really the only way he can defeat Kamaru Usman. It's if he is able to land a flurry of punches and kicks early. Not what he did to Ben Askren, because honestly, that was an anomaly. Because if he didn't land that flying knee to Ben Askren, who knows what his wrestling would have been, would it have handled against Ben Askren. I don't know, but I'm not here to talk about that. But when it comes to the game plan, for Jorge Masvidal against Kamar Usman, what he can do, leg kicks, leg kicks, leg kicks, leg kicks, but mix them up. Because his problem in the first fight, in the first 20 seconds or so, he was landing outside and inside leg kicks. That's great against a striker, but against a wrestler, that wrestler's just going to catch it and dump you. And that's exactly what Kamar Usman did. That was his fatal mistake. That was his fatal flaw. That's what went wrong in that first fight. And if Jorge Masvidal does the same, it will be a problem. I have been hearing that Jorge Masvidal has been training and working on his wrestling with Bo Nickel. If you do not know who Bo Nickel is, Bo Nickel, an NCAA champion, a freestyle wrestler out of Penn State. A great wrestler, by the way. But that's not going to help him for Kamaru Usman. Especially in a second go-around when Usman already has tape on him. And here's why. Because freestyle wrestling and wrestling designed for MMA are two different styles. For freestyle wrestling, obviously, it's just pure wrestling. You're on a mat. You can work single legs, double legs, underhooks, all that good stuff in wrestling. But MMA wrestling, yes, there's all that in terms of technicalities and wrestling working that way. But also, you have to worry about strikes. You cannot just solely focus on wrestling. That's where Ben Askren went wrong against Jorge Masvidal. So kudos to Masvidal for doing that and noticing that Ben Askren was not going to strike with him. But let me tell you this. Kamar Usman is not just a wrestler. He's a dominant striker. For my money, he's the most dominant champion right now in the UFC because a lot of people call him boring because he doesn't knock people out even like Masvidal does. But he doesn't have to because at the end of the day, He comes from a wrestling background at Nebraska Kearney. He was a D2 wrestling champion. Let's not forget about that. And a lot of people have forgotten about that. Kamaru Usman loves technical falls. And if you do not know what technical falls are in wrestling, look at it as a mercy rule in baseball. That's essentially what it is. You're not pinning somebody. You're essentially beating them so badly on the scoreboard that the referee had to call the match off because it's not going to get any closer. And that's what he does 
on the scorecards in MMA. He makes it so difficult for you to get back in that your only chance is to catch him with a lucky shot. Kamar Usman only has one loss in his career, and it was via a submission. It wasn't even a knockout. It was a submission. And ever since then, worked on his jiu-jitsu, became a better striker, and now he's the world champion. Especially with Trevor Whitman, a guy who made Justin Gaethje into a legitimate interim champion in the lightweight division. And also, if you want to talk about light kicks, there's no better partner to train with if you're Kamaru Usman than Justin Gaethje. Justin Gaethje back in 2018 lit Dustin Poirier's legs up. In 2020, in Abu Dhabi, guess what? He lit Habib Nurmagomedov's legs up. That's a great guy to train with. And in a way, he can kind of mimic Jorge Masvidal's style. So I do think there are a lot of benefits of him training with Trevor Whitman and Justin Gaethje and those guys. But for me, I just don't see the outcome changing whatsoever. I do think you will see a refined version of Jorge Masvidal just because he will have more time on his hands. But I want to say this, and listen to me clear. The only reason why Jorge Masvidal had to take that fight back in July on six days' notice is because in terms of the contractual terms, he was playing hardball because he was originally supposed to face Kamar Usman at UFC 251, but that fell through. And then Gilbert Burns stepped in, but Masvidal saved the day. Credit to him. But now he will have a full training camp. Like I said, though, it won't matter. Kamaru Usman, his wrestling, his striking will stand the test of time. There is not a welterweight out there that can stop him. And I do not think it is going to be Jorge Masvidal if it's anyone. Because he doesn't have the wrestling. You can't go on the ground with Kamaru Usman and think you can just scramble out. That's not how it works. I don't care if you're working with Bo Nickel. Good luck. You're not going to be able to do that. So ultimately, I say all that to say, in the rematch, Kamaru Usman will be 2-0 and against Jorge Masvidal, and he will retain his belt and prove why he is the most dominant champion in the UFC right now. Take care, everyone.